What is up YouTube? Kim Triple Eight here and today for you guys I have the extended version of my deck profile where I'm going to explain my card choices and where I'm also going to show you guys what I'm going to change up about the deck, how I felt and certain situations uh, that happened to me at the regional, um, which could help a lot of you guys because, um, well, this was my first time with the deck at a regional and um, I hope that my experiences help you guys to understand the deck a lot better so you can also play it at regionals. So, yeah. Um, the video could be a tad longer, of course, because I'm going to explain everything. Um, but bear with me if you want to see the regular deck profile, just glossing over the cards, going pretty fast. I'll try and link it down below in the description, and you can just watch that one. Um, today I'm going to do the extended version of the deck profile. I'm going to show all the cards, all the explanations, and tomorrow I'm going to do a, um, a combo video that I've already posted the pictures of on Facebook, uh, on my Facebook page, so you can also go watch that in the link down below. Um, I got a couple of requests asking me how I made that field with the weird starting hand that I had, and um, I'm going to tell you guys how I did that. Uh, of course, that's just like one situation, but um, guys wanted to know so I'm definitely going to show you guys and th from the day onwards after that I'm going to uh, be playing the build that I want to play with this um, some card changes some cards will have been changed and I'm going to test uh, I'm going to do some test videos with that deck build so um, for now the deck profile so first things first triple magical abductor I felt you couldn't cut this down in a 60 card deck because you need all the extenders, all the searches that you could get and Abductor is actually just a really good extender because you can get any card that you want um, if you just happen to have like one or two spells in your hand it's it's an amazing card to have so yeah um, it also helps that it gets spell counters because if you have um, the Jackal King on board like with the Mythical Beast engine uh, you can also uh, use the Abductor's counters for its negation or for the banishing effect from the Cerberus, so that, that could also be a thing. Um, I've opted to go with Double Jackal King in this build over the, um, over the Basilisk. Even though I'm not playing Desires uh, in this build, I felt that having Double Jackal King is more beneficial because there's an actual uh, combo in this deck where you can leave the Jackal on the board and it's just another negate and the goal of this deck was to have as much negate on the field as possible so the Jackal King was actually pretty important there. Uh, for more extenders, uh, starter cards, the Triple Curtain Razor, you really want to have a, an Electromite before your Pendulum Summon, it's like one of the most important things that can happen so yeah. Uh, the card has been really good. Every time I saw it, I had a great board, so there was nothing else to say about that one. Uh, triple Darkworm and only one Gate Zero, like, even though it's a 60 card build, you don't even have the room for the second Gate Zero. Like, if, you, if you're going to splash in so many other engines, you just lose out on so much space, it's, it's crazy. And I do have to say, I do prefer a... Uh, a 40 card list or a 41, 42, whatever you desire, but like something low, I do desire that. I, I do feel that that's way better. And looking at Jeremy Mitchell's list, that could actually be way better uh, to play with on tournament levels. But this is just, I, I love to play with this deck. It's It just puts up such big and amazing boards and it's, it's just awesome to be using. And you kind of feel powerful if you put up a board with like 7, 8 and a gate, That's, it's just crazy, so... Uh, yeah, but... <laughs> so yeah. <clears throat> uh, further on, Triple Chronograph, I, I feel this is like the most important cards in any Pendulum deck right now. <clears throat> it's, it's just so versatile, so yeah. The one Time Gazer, of course, to go with the bricks. <laughs> the Chronographs are, are amazing, the Time Gazer... Eh, you have to use it right, so yeah. <laughs> the Magician Count is actually kind of staple right these days in any weird variant of Pendulum, like in the standard it's kind of a bit different, but in the in 
any hybrid it's like the same like triple wisdom eye triple harmonizing um and then one purple one black fang one oaf one janky and one dragon pit um i do have to say i didn't feel that i missed anything about these cards um maybe like i i kind of wanted a second oaf sometimes just for recursion but I can't say I missed any of, of a second copy. I mean, I had everything that I needed and I was happy about it, so yeah. The Wisdom Eye, uh, the, the, the Wisdom Eye even was great, like, didn't conflict anything at all with the lore, so yeah. Uh, for other monsters, the one, the Strudo, you really want to have a second target for your Dragon Shrine or your Dragon Ravine. Uh, you're playing a lot of a lot of cards for Dark Worm alone if you don't have this and this is just such a great extender in this build it's it's amazing maybe a weird choice one drawn logbird um, I am playing triple abductor and there's like an easy combo where if you open enough spells or or like pendulum monsters that can recur themselves out of the scales and you have the magical abductor you can scale this Use your uh, spells so you can search for a for a pendulum monster. Destroy this with the electromite, and when you pendulum summon it out, use like other spells like dragons ravine. You're gonna get the orchestrated return, um, and then at the end of the combo, before you link this away or synchro with it or whatever, you can search the draw lock. And I'm only playing one copy just because of the fact that you can search it and. I don't see a reason to play more hand traps in the main. It's a 60 card deck, so you're probably not going to draw any. Um, in 7 rounds, I drew this twice in my opening hand, and it was actually fine. Um, but I searched it out 4 times, so yeah, I mean, card is actually bonkers, and it's an amazing hand trap right now. And the fact that you can search is just plus. Um, I would prefer Lancia over this, but you can't search Lancia with your regular Pendulum shenanigans, and you can search a Drawn Lock or a Veiler. And I've opted to go with Drawn Lock, so yeah. I didn't regret it. Um, it was actually pretty, pretty good. Uh, then for some engines, the Orcus engine. I'm only playing one Orcus Nightmare. Um, a lot of builds are running two uh, with any of the Orcus builds, because if you draw it, it's dead in your hand and you can't use it anymore and you won't get a nightmare from your an Orcus nightmare from your deck if you only have one at that point. But in Pendulum you don't mind. Like it's a level seven, which is amazing because you can pendulum summon it out. And if you pendulum summon it alongside with some other uh, monsters, you already have your combo. You don't need Nightmare Mermaid at that point, so you don't need to discard and you can actually extend your combo a little bit further if you draw this. And it's actually not bad at all. Like it's, it's not terrible, so why, why would you mind? Um, like, in general, you don't need a second one in Pendulum. Just one is fine. Um, the standard stuff in one Harp Horror, one Symbol Skeleton, you need these for the combo. Uh, one World Wand, uh, it is a level 8, so it can't be Pendulum Summoned, but you can ditch it for like anything, like a Ravine or... Just use the orchestrate return with this in your hand. I mean, it's it's all possible. Uh, the card is actually pretty good, and it's there for the com the combos where you can uh, summon a final rank four all the way at the end of your combo. So yeah. Uh, and then the one card I'm proxying at the moment because I borrowed mine at the tournament is one orchestrate return. I don't actually have one. Um, right here, it's an orchestrate Babel. Don't run that. It's terrible. Uh, in this build, but I do have to say that the orchestrate return was was just phenomenal. Like even in hands where you didn't have an electromite before you get got to your pendulum summon, you can just go. Uh, if you if you get any two monsters on the field, uh, you can like with the Destrudo or uh, like if it would happen. Like if you draw both of Phantom Dites, you could just normal this special this. Go for your Orcus play, like with the Nightmare Phoenix, go into Mermaid, get the entire Orcus play uh, ready. And at the end, you, you have a Summon Sorceress, so you have two arrows pointing downwards. You just resolve the Orchestrate Return, draw some scales, go from there. I mean, 
the, it's actually a really good engine and I like the Orcus engine in here a lot. Um, so yeah, PK Monsters, I feel they are part of the Orcus engine right now. I mean, you with the Orcus engine you just go into PK Rusty Bardish like it's nothing. You can go into these swiftly, it's, it's amazing. So yeah. Uh, for the <coughs> for the Phantom Knight spells and traps, um, at the tournament I was running double fog blade, one shade brigandine, and afterwards I realized this is wrong. Um, to be honest, I've put up boards with eight negates that got broken thanks to a single super polymerization. I know the cards that won, and it's super sacky for the opponent to actually draw it. But I've been super polyed twice in seven rounds, and I got from a board with eight negates to a board with two negates. And that's actually kind of stupid. Just because of one card and the repercussions of that card, so... Um, yeah, you don't really like that. Now, what would be better in general is to have those negates and have like an Azatoth play or a Kali Yuga play and the the thing that I'm actually going for I feel in my head is the Azatoth play because it's way better in general um, against things like Salamangrate and well you name it but Kali Yuga is also great against those but I feel like having the Vortex and other negates on your field is actually way better than having uh, less negates at a Kali Yuga so in general, I, I, I think I'm going to cut one Fog Blade. I'm gonna sh change it up to a Rank Up Magic. The Rank Up Magic, uh, whatever it's called, uh, the launch. And I'm going to add a Time Thief and an Azatoth to my extra deck. And I'll explain what cards I'd cut um, when I get there. Um, like, when I get to the extra deck. But for the main deck, I'm more than likely going to cut a fog blade for the rank of magic launch um, I feel that would be way better it can still get super polyed the time thief it's a dark it can it can be used for a starving venom fusion dragon um, but I I still feel the azatot play would be way better and even if you get hand trapped going into an azatot play kinda means you can still win easily and this deck, it, it runs through hand traps like crazy. I've had several occasions where my opponents had Ash and a Veiler or Ash and Ogre and I just got through it. It's it's actually quite easy to do in this deck because Electromite's one thing, but you don't need Electromite in this build. You can just go for the Nightmare Orcus place and end on the Summon Sorceress or the Rusty Bardish, Pendulum Summon there and still have your complete field, and you don't really care. There was one match where I opened Godly, and um, my, opponent, my opponent had three hand traps. I still got through it, so... And he, he used them all, like, on, on splendid choices, and he, he used them all uh, before, before I got to the Vortex on my field, because he knew that his hand traps would be dead right there, but... Yeah, it's just awesome. I still got through every everything. It it really didn't matter at all. So yeah, the PK engine is really good. Uh, just for having multiple negates, like the the rusty barge gives you two negates. But what are you going to do with two negates when they still get through it? And may, maybe like you you still have this on board, but now you can't attack their monster anymore, and you have to use resources to get around your own cards. And that kind of bugged me sometimes. And um. Yeah, that's certainly a thing. <laughs> uh, next up, the next engine. I went with this one pretty late before the tournament. Like, uh, I've opted to use it and in hopes that it would work. And it actually did. I, w I was... How do you say it in English? I was pleasantly surprised. So, yeah. Um, one for one. With a small DD engine. DD Savant Kepler, only a one off in the deck uh, because you don't actually want to draw it. Um, but if you get it with one for one or you, or you draw it, it's not a problem at all. One Dark Contract with the Gate, one Lamia. 
Now, the idea behind this was actually simple. If you get to your Kepler and you get it to the field, you're going to make an electromite. So the Kepler has been used. You have the dark contracts on the field. So let's say the one for one isn't there either. It's a turbo card as well, so it's really good. It helps uh, making electromite before the pendulum summon. At this point, you have the gate. You get a Lamia in hand. So gate and Lamia in hand. You make your entire board with the Electromite, you Pendulum Summon. At this point, you're gonna go for the Orcus play. You're gonna make a Nightmare Unicorn, probably, or a, or a Phoenix. Go for, the nightmare, uh, go for the Nightmare Mermaid, and you have to discard a card. So you discard the DD Lamia. Get your entire Orcus play going. Towards the end of your combo, you're going to use the DD Lamia's effect. Tribute the, gate, uh, tribute the Gate, and you get to Special Summon the Lamia for free. It's a level 1 Dark Tuner. It can be used to make Rusty. It can be used with a level 7 to make a Borrowload Savage Dragon. It can be used with Summon Sorceress and any other monster to make a Deco Talker. Or if you have room, uh, or if you don't have any room, you can use this card with the Summon Sorceress to make an Underclock Taker. Then use any other monster with the Underclock Taker to make a Deco Talker. This card alone, like the DD engine, has given me so many options. <laughs> that's just amazing. It's, it, it was really, really good. Like, and that, that's not even everything that it can do. It had more, more things for me in the, in the games that, that I could ever imagine beforehand. Like, even if you only draw the Kepler and you don't have any other extenders or, and you can't make an Electromite before the Pendulum Summon, you can still go into the Orcus engine just because of one Kepler. Normal summon the Kepler, get the gate, activate the gate, add the Lamia. At this point, ditch the gate for the cost, special Lamia. You have two monsters on board which you can link away for the, for the Nightmare Phoenix, go for Nightmare Mermaid and you have your entire Orcus play from one card. It's a one card link three, getting you into Rusty, going for the PK engine, and get, giving you two draws from the orchestrate return. The, the one DD Kepler was amazing. And I'm actually contemplating to adding more of this. Uh, because it's such an easy way to extend your place. And it has been awesome for me. But the thing is that you, you don't want to draw multiples. Like, I, I've... I, I have flashbacks right now from moments where I was playing 60 card pendulums and I actually opened triple Kepler, uh, double gate, and then my sixth card was the Thomas and I opened my six cards with everything of the engine that I, that I had and those hands actually happen, I mean, they feel stacked but it isn't, so yeah, it's just crazy. Um, but in any case, like, this little engine of four cards is the engine that could. Um, this, these four cards actually gave me so much versatility in the deck, it's, it's, it's actually amazing and since DD has been out of the picture for so long, people are actually as asking me to read Kepler, they, they, are, they want to read the, the gate, they, they, they don't know what the card does anymore and that's actually kind of fun, it, I, don't have, I don't have to lie because of that and it, it gives some sort of versatility. It's also easy for going second, like going second you don't want this, you, you really don't want this. So going second, like when, when you're siding, you, you just side this out, it's four free cars for siding, so yeah. Uh, and I have to say that the engine on itself was, wow, it, it was really good. Uh, for the rest we're only having spells yet, um, and in practice I'm guessing I'm only playing three spells. Um, it's it is a little bit more, <laughs> but like if, if it comes down to it, it's only three different kinds of spells. First of all, we have the Triple Dragon's Ravine, Double Shrine, and the One Foolish. You, like 99% of the cases, you use this for Dark Worm or Destrudo. Like if you have one, you're happy because you have a Dark Worm, you can go for Electromite before the Pendulum Summon. If you have two, you're like, yay, I also have Destrudo. If you have the Dragon's Ravine with Destrudo or Dark Worm, you have an entire different kind of play right then and there. Now, in the entire tournament, seven rounds, I've only used the Foolish Burial once for anything else. Um, 
and that was for an Orcus card. Uh, it was my brick hand, I'm going to show it uh, right after the deck profile. Um, well, since, since we're here, like, <laughs> I, I'm guessing I could show you guys already. Um, I opened Triple Abductor. Yeah, in a 60 card deck, like, try me. <laughs> uh, what else? Where is it? The Dark Worm. What else did I open? I know I scaled these two and I only had this for the pendulum. Um, I kind of forgot what my fifth card was. But it was irrelevant for... Any, uh, oh yeah, the fog blade. <laughs> uh, I've, I've been there. <laughs> Here. This was my opening hand in the tournament. The only hand I bricked. Um... <laughs> Yeah, try try to try to play with the, this hand. Like, uh, if you normal summon the Dark Worm, you get a gate zero. You don't have a high scale. Turn ends that then and there. If you scale this, get a gate zero in the scale. You don't. You you can't pendulum summon anything else but dark monsters. Abductor is an Earth, so you can't summon anything. Your turn ends. The only thing that I could actually do. Scale, scale. Pendulum 2, go for Electromite, and try to go from there, and that's like everything you can do, like, it's so crazy. And eventually I was still able to go into uh, the Orcus engine, uh, after the Electromite, I, like, I'm, I'm going to show you uh, later on in the, I'm, I'm going to keep these aside, I'll, I'll show you what I, what I did for the brick hand, so, yeah. So this is actually only one spell in my eye because you you ge in general you want to uh, use it to send Dark Worm, and if you don't send Dark Worm, you send the Strudo. That's that's the key thing. Uh, I'm not playing terraforming. Um, I already have enough cards that are being. Well, I can't say that on YouTube. Um, <laughs> I have enough cards that uh, are useless against Thunder Dragons, so I didn't want terraforming to be a thing that I could have at that point, and Dragon's Ravina 3 just seemed fine, and it has been fine, so I don't see a reason to change that up at all. Triple Pendulum Call, and Double Duelist Alliance. Same thing as the Ravines, like I, I was... I'm not playing terraforming because of the Thunder Dragons, and I shouldn't have played the Duelist Alliances. I had one Thunder Dragon matchup, I lost that one, and only for the simple fact that I opened one Pendulum Call, one Duelist Alliance, Abductor, a Master Cerberus, and a Dark Worm. So, yeah, while it's fun to have Pendulum Call and Dark Worm in your hand, you can't use it if they have Double Colossus, so yeah. My hand was actually perfect for going first, but I went second, so yeah, I didn't get any prize for that. So I am going to cut the two duelist alliances. Um, I'm not sure as of yet what I'm going to put in for them. Um, I might add a second Kepler or a second Oaf Dragon. That could be a thing. Um, but for now, yeah, I'm definitely going to cut these, so yeah. And then the final three cards are Allure of Darkness. So as I said, I'm only playing three spells, a Foolish Burial, Pendulum Call, and a Lore. So yeah. These were actually amazing over, over the entire event, like, nothing to say about that card at all. Then, for the extra deck. Borolo Savage Dragon. You need the card for the combo, it's in a, it's in a gate, it's Awesome, it has been great over the entire event, nothing to say. Uh, same about Vortex and Absolute, still awesome. Um, in general, it's really good. I wasn't playing Meteor Burst Dragon. Uh, for a simple fact, the Orcus engine only allows dark monsters. Uh, so while you're going into these before you start your Orcus play, 
everything else in the extra deck that has to be summoned afterwards has to be dark. And I do realize that I don't have to extend my plays that far. And I can have other cards in my extra deck, like a Dweller for in turn 2. Yeah, what's a Dweller turn 2 going to do? Like, i rather have that Dweller turn 1, so... But it's a water, so no. Um, these cards were amazing during the entire event, so nothing to say about that. On the other hand, I was playing 2 rank falls, Evil Swarm Nightmare, Time Star Magician. Um, I love the cards. Evil Swarm Nightmare is amazing in the uh, combo, uh, giving you two additional interruptions. And Time Star Magician was in theory there because, um, well, some it, it has a lot of great utility. Like you can search Chronograph, go for additional monsters, get Boral Sword Dragon on board, uh, go for the OTK, or you can search like any magician, like a Purple Poison, Black Fang, whatever you need, and that's actually pretty good. It has really great utility. How many times did I summon it in seven rounds? Zero. There wasn't one single time where I thought, oh boy, if I'm going to make Time Star Magician, I'm going to win. And else I wouldn't have. I, I really like Time Star Magician, and I'm sure it's great for in a standard build. But not for in an Orcus deck, like not in Orcus Pendulum. Like the, you, your extra deck is too small. It's only 15 cards. I am going to cut these two for for the Time Thief and then Azathoth. Um, it has to be done. I feel in any scenario that that will be better. And while I do like these two cards, I am going to cut them in this build. So yeah. Time Thief and as a thought. And surprisingly, all the other cards in my extra deck are Link Monsters. And you need them. Electromite. After you go for Electromite, you often go into your Nightmare Place. So um, the first thing you're going to go into afterwards is the Absolute Dragon, of course. And you're going to use the Absolute and the Electromite to go into a Nightmare Unicorn. Underneath the Unicorn, you get your Vortex play. If you can't make Unicorn, most of the time you're going to make a Nightmare Phoenix, so that doesn't really change anything up. Um, you can summon this because you haven't used any of the Orcus yet, um, so it's a fire. The only thing you have to watch out for is the fact that it's a fire means that the Salamangrates can actually use this for possible links. Uh, so watch out for the Boral Load. Uh, combo with the, what was that thing called, the, the smaller link 2 that makes your borrow load attack, tw attack twice, um, forgotten the name, update jammer, if they get this, they can make heat, heat leo with your own phoenix, pop, bounce away your scales, it's kind of detrimental, also watch out for the Hita, the, it can revive fire moss from your opponent's graveyard I believe, so uh, they can steal your Electromite, they can steal your Nightmare Phoenix, so against Salamangrates, try to go into your Nightmare Unicorn, and if you're as smart as can be, like, I only realized that after a couple of Salamangrate matches, you don't have to equip the Unicorn to your Boral Load Savage Dragon. Short 3 negates is awesome, but just equip the, the Electromite at that point, and don't have a Fire Monster in your graveyard, so yeah. Nightmare Mermaid, the start of any Orcus combo. So, as soon as you go into the Orcus, you're gonna get to Galatea. Card is bonkers, by the way, it's an awesome card. After Galatea is used, you're gonna go into Summon Sorceress. You're gonna get back your Galatea, you're gonna get back a monster, and afterwards, you're gonna go into Rusty Bardish. With Rusty Bardish, you can go and send the cloak, and thanks to the cloak, you can get a boot. And if you have boots, any other monster, you can use that and your summon sorceress to go for underclock to go into Deco Talker. So this is these are actually all link monsters that I've used game game over game over game, and the combo was so easy for me to do at the end. I mean, it it's so. 
it, it isn't even linear because you're using all kind of different monsters to get to the same result and like any five cards from your deck, as long as you can make an Electromite before your Pendulum Summon, and you're able to Pendulum Summon, should get you into the entire combo, and that's it's just awesome. Like it's crazy um, how much things you can do. Um, the final card in the extra deck, Boral Sword Dragon. I haven't summoned this a lot during the entire tournament. I kind of regret that. I somehow that that's one of the weaknesses that I still have. When I go second. I feel I should make this more. I, I tend to forget that I have Boral Sword Dragon in the extra deck and that it's such an easy tool for OTKing. Like this plus any monster with 2000 attack or something is, is game. That's, that's crazy. It, it is. And I tend to forget that. So yeah. Uh, for the extra deck, I feel I don't have to cut any of the Link monsters. I felt it was all awesome, and because I had a play to go into Deco Talker, I didn't need the Karen Gorgon, so I liked that a lot. The only thing I changed up is the Time Thief with the Azatot, so yeah. Um, I do have to say it as it is. So yeah, there, there's always that. And then, finally, for the side deck. Um, yeah, please don't hate on it. <laughs> Um, it has worked out a lot, so... I want to go first. So I cited in the Aussie package for when I know that I'm going second. And I have to say, it worked wonders. I forgot one time that um, there was a Dweller in play and I couldn't use the Aussie uh, to summon out the Mare Mare. But I... If I couldn't do this play, I was going to lose that jewel anyway. And maybe I should have realized that sooner. Um, eventually we went to game 3 and I drew. Uh, I got a draw that round. And that was actually sad because it was round 1. Uh, against a really good opponent. So really no shame there. But maybe if I realized it sooner I would have scooped quicker. And I would have been able to finish game 3. Which I would have won else. Um, so yeah I have some learning to do there. Time management I guess. Uh, but in general, the Aussie package is, is amazing. Like, everything else you need for this is already standard in the extra deck. So, yeah, it's, it's kind of cool. And you're all going to hate me for this one. Triple Phantasme. Um, I still like it. it. Every time I saw it, it was great. Um, the general theory is just to have this to draw your side deck. So, I, I know the card is expensive, but... Uh, that's not my fault. <laughs> I mean, this card is just... I feel you should run this in every Pendulum deck if you're going second. Um, it just helps you draw anything else and, yeah, go from there. I was running Triple Sphere Mode. <coughs> I probably should run Triple Lava Golem instead. <coughs> they kind of have the same purpose in where Lava Golem can just tribute over monsters, but like Salaman great players, they, they tend to leave two monsters on board, not three. Sometimes they do three, but yeah, they know the, that Pendulum can side sphere mode, so games two and three, they should only leave two. Um, so yeah, you can't use this card against Salaman Grace while you, where you actually want it. Uh, against Thunder Dragons, like, 3 is amazing, but I feel like Lava Golem just over the two Colossuses can actually already win you the game. Um, or Lava Golem over the two Negations, that, that could also work, uh, if you don't have a lot of cards at search. So, I think I'm going to change these up to Lava Golems. It's side deck, so it's not that pre prevalent for you guys, maybe. Um, but yeah, pick Lava Golems over Sphere Mose, I think, so yeah. And then nothing to say, like triple Denko, triple Reboot. These cards were amazing all weekend. Um, gotta love these, so yeah. Now, I did promise a weird hand with these. Um, this was the only brick hand that I had during the entire tournament. 
Like, you, you people can ask yourself, like, how did you only brick, like, once when you have so many bricks in the deck? Drawing any two, like, any two of the Orcusts, of the PKs, maybe the Traps even, that doesn't care one bit. You don't really care. You can discard into the graveyard and the only thing that happens is that you can skip uh, somewhere in your combo. Like, you can do something else, you can send something else, you can special summon something else. It, like, if you draw any of the PK monsters, you, you just search all three traps instead of only two. So, you always get some other kind of plus somewhere else and you don't really care. Now, the only problem that you have with brick hands like this is if the opponent has hand traps, because you're just gonna die off of that. Like, no contest. You're, you're just gonna die. Um, so, the thing that happened was... I already explained it. I had to scale these two. You, you have no other ch choice. I pendulum summoned these two. Um, our, and I got a counter on the Abductor, of course, because you, you scale Abductor before you do the Dark Worm, just in case you get to the amount of counters that you need. So, I went with one counter. At this point, you're going to make the Electromite. Uh, I have to think sometimes. I, I'm not really sure I remember everything. Um, now, keep in mind, this was game two, so we had sided already. Um, at this point, using the Electromite's effect uh, to send the Chronograph. Now, it might actually seem weird what I'm all going to do, but if you brick like this, you need a way to get more monsters on the board, because you, I've already Pendulum Summoned, so you're not going to get more out of that. And you want to go into the Orcus uh, engine, because the Orcus engine actually gives you a couple of negates on its own, and some draws. So, there's always that. So at this point, you're gonna send the chronograph. I'll, I'll do it like this, because else you're not gonna see a lot. And what happens here is you're gonna use the Electromite, you're gonna pop the Dark Worm, getting back the chronograph. Now, at this point, you're gonna draw one card, and the card that I drew at the tournament was even worse on top of all of this, and the card I drew was actually the Phantasme, and I was going second, uh, no, I was, I was going first, I yeah, going first, and I won, uh, and I had to uh, side something in for some bad cards that I sided out, and I felt at that point that the Phantasmes were still great because they're level 7s and I can pendulum summon them out, them out together with everything else. But just the fact that I drew it after the Electromite kinda sucked, but it also gave me some re reassurance that I had a play in the opponent's turn. So that, that was actually kinda fine for me, but... Yeah, you, you might want something else at that point, so yeah. Um, here I scaled the Chronograph, getting another counter on the Abductor, and using Chronograph's effect there, um, actually means that you get a Time Gazer on the field. Um, if I can find it. <laughs> and the reason I did it like that is just to get another, another counter on the Abductor. Because if, you, if I special the Chronograph after the Electrobite pop, I wouldn't have got... I, I still would have had one monster on field, so that wouldn't have changed. But now I have an additional counter, so yeah. Going into the Burbate engine, like going to Nightmare, Phoenix or Unicorn, doesn't matter. I'm gonna go into Mermaid. At this point, I made a choice um, regarding the matchup. I decided that Phantasme would have been better to keep than the Fog Blade, and the Fog Blade would have also had another uh, use in the graveyard in case I got to my PK stuff later. So I decided to ditch the Fog Blade. Special summoning the Orcist Nightmare. So you get the Nightmare. And after this, it's like fairly easy. It's 
seems standard, but oh well. So summon the Galatea, using the Nightmare's effect, so you banish it. You're gonna send the Harp Horror, Harp Horror's effect, banishing it. Special summoning the Symbol Skeleton. I'm gonna go for an easy Summon Sorceress. At this point, Symbol Skeleton's effect, special summon the Galatea. Using Summon Sorcerer's effect on the Galatea, special summoning the World Wand. Now at this point, uh, Galatea's effect is going to shuffle back the Symbol Skeleton into the deck, and you're gonna get the Orchestrate return uh, into your Spell and Trap zone. Um, yeah, I, I have a Babel, but uh, uh, sh you, should, you should have the return, so that shouldn't be a problem. Now at this point, I'm gonna go into Rusty with these two. Using Rusty's effect. If I can find it. Sending Cloak. Setting the, sh setting the Shade Brigandine. Now keep in mind, um, the fog blade is in the graveyard, so you can't use the shade brigandine. So you have to get uh, you have to get the cloak out of there, and yeah, there there's a couple of ways to do that, but yeah, shit shit can happen, of course. Um, at that point, using the cloak, fog blade. And there you can, and since everything is out of deck except for the last fog blade, um, which we actually really want to have out of the graveyard, but there's not really much you can do. You can just go for the orchestrate return, uh, tribute this off, getting two draws. Um, and here I drew the foolish burial, um, and something else. I, I can't really remember what I did there. Um, Maybe I should write that stuff down after after a match, but uh, yeah, I remember. I think I got DD Crow somewhere along the line. I don't remember where. No biggie. Even with a brick hand like I had, you can go for double fog blades uh, pretty easily. Um, Right here, I probably also should have done something else. Um, but yeah, that's like altogether, it's not really that great. Um, I believe my my nightmare got banished, so um, with the DD Crow. So, so yeah, I don't know why I was going over all of it so fast, but let's rewind a little bit. So you get the Galatea on board. Uh, with the Orcus Nightmare, and there it got banished by the DD Crow. Now at this point you don't have anything, like, I, I didn't have these, I didn't have this, um, I certainly didn't have this, I only had the Abductor with two counters and the Phantasme, and I had the Galatea. Alright. Sorry guys for the, for my mistake, but, um, I was doing the tournament report there. So, we're up to this. Uh, this is in graveyard, so that's fine. Um, at this point, they did decrowed my <laughs> Orcus Nightmare, so I, I got really sad. Um, I already didn't have anything. And the only thing I could do was Galatea's effect, sending this to my deck again. And now actually setting the Orchestrate Return. Using the Orchestrate Return, tributing the Galatea to draw two cards and I remember to draw to draw the foolish burial so foolish burial and I really don't remember what the other card was I drew something else but the more important stuff was that my abductor got a third counter which I could remove just to search the Curtain Razor, because if Curtain Razor had, um, was in my hand, I'd, 
I didn't have anything left on the feet. Oh, a black fang, a black fang. I drew a black fang. Wow, where did that come from? So, I drew the black fang with the Foolish Burial. Added the Curtain Razor. Use Curtain Razor as effect to summon it on the field. And then, at that point, you could still use that Foolish Burial. Um, I went for the Orcus Engine again. And I still went to Shade Brigandine, uh, got my two Fog Blades, and I stopped my play there because I didn't have anything else. I had a Phantasme to be special summoned, get some draws, uh, but eventually I still lost because two negates isn't nearly enough. You, re If I had the Acetot package, I uh, would have gone for Shade Brigandine, got a monster from the uh, world, from the world wand, the Harp Horror. And I still would have been able to actually uh, stop my opponent from playing, but because I didn't play it, um, yeah, this kind of sucked, and it was all over. So, yeah, um, that was the loss that actually did me in, I feel. Um, but yeah, overall, I liked the deck a lot. It needs a bit of work. Definitely going to change up one Fog Blade for the for the rank up magic launch and I'm going to cut out the two duelist alliances I'm not sure for what but well we'll see in a test video I guess um, I still have to think a little bit about that so yeah there's always that um, I hope you guys liked this video it was a bit long <laughs> 46 minutes wow um, but yeah I hope you guys see how I was thinking at the tournament. Um, I got super poly twice. Um, I, I really hate that card now. Um, so yeah. Um, see you guys in the next video, I guess. Ciao!